Fire at Will needs help. It desperately needs a buff, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. For many years now, Fire at Will has been rather underpowered in comparison to most of the other firing mode abilities. Cryptic's put in a lot of effort into buffing a lot of the other firing modes, like Beam Overload, Scatter Volley, even the Specialization firing modes. So before we get into it, let's start with what Fire at Will is and how it's different from the other firing modes. Beam Fire at Will will do a number of things to your beam weapons. First, it will increase the number of attacks it can make in a single firing cycle from 4 to 5, and it'll allow your beam weapons to fire on two separate targets at the same time. The trade-off is that you'll also receive a small debuff to your damage and the accuracy of your beams. How much will depend on which level of the ability that you're using. Most of the other existing firing modes are single target abilities, meaning they only hit one target at a time. So that's Beam Overload, Cannon Rapid Fire, uh, Exceed Rated Limits, Surgical Strikes, and Reroute Reserves to Weapons. Cannon Scatter Volley is really the closest one you can compare this to, because Cannon Scatter Volley is the only other firing mode ability for energy weapons that can hit multiple targets at once. The difference between the two is that while Scatter Volley will confine your cannon weapons fire to a 90 degree cone, Fire at Will doesn't have any directional limitations beyond that of the beam arrays that you are using. So depending on the type of beams that you're using, whether they be uh, dual beam banks, beam arrays, or omnidirectional beams, you can get much better coverage, you know, directionally speaking, than you would with a scatter volley build, which you're only going to get in the, within that 90 degree cone. Even, even if you're using all turrets, you know, turrets, they can fire in any direction, but once you hit cannon scatter volley, they are going to be, all eight of them are going to be confined to that 90 degree cone. Now, if you're new here, you might be asking yourself, what kind of idiot puts eight turrets on a build? And my response to that is... So yeah, that's what Fire at Will does. It allows you the ability to fire beams in every direction, which is why I really like it. This is my preferred playstyle. This is how I like to set up a lot of my ships, particularly the large, heavier cruisers with, uh, you know, with eight weapon slots, you know, so I can put beams everywhere. And because this is my preferred way to play, this is also why it really bugs me that Fire at Will will consistently underperform in comparison to the other firing modes, particularly like Beam Overload and uh, Cannon Scatter Volley. I'll be comparing this to those two the most because they are the most comparable to Fire at Will because Beam Overload is the other major beam firing mode and uh, Cannon Scatter Volley is the only other firing mode that can fire on multiple targets at once. Technically, the other specialization abilities do also affect beams, but they affect beams and cannons and it's just it's a whole big thing. Basically, Beam Overload and Scatter Volley are also the most commonly used firing modes among like the player base, so I feel like, again, that's the smarter reason to mostly stick to those. Now, while Fire at Will's lack of performance does really annoy me, this actually wasn't always the case. Way back in the day, Fire at Will was actually part of the DPS meta, so much so that a lot of people were playing it. You know, pretty much everyone in the DPS community used Fire at Will, and it became very popular. So much so that Cryptic thought it was a little too popular, and their decision to kind of counter that, you know, counter that level of thinking so people would, you know, lean towards some of the other firing modes was to uh, nerf Fire at Will into the ground. They did this by increasing its global cooldown from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. Now, a global cooldown is basically the lowest a cooldown can get for an ability. So with a global cooldown of 20 seconds, that means no matter what you do, no matter, you know, Ox to Bat, Boimler Effect, uh, Improved Photonic Officer, no matter what you're using, Fire at Will will never get below a 20 second cooldown. Meanwhile, every other firing mode still has a global cooldown of only 15 seconds. Since then, in the terms of competitive runs, Fire at Will has been largely relegated to being only used on tank builds for the sake of building up a uh, threat. And even then, a lot of these Fire at Will tanks are being shown up by uh, more experimental science tanks. Now, most firing modes have what we call extension traits. These are certain starship traits that will extend the duration of those firing mode abilities. Beam Overload has Super Weapon Ingenuity, Scatter Volley has Withering Barrage, and the Specialization Firing Modes has uh, Vanguard Specialists, uh, even Rapid Fire has Go for the Kill. All Firing Mode abilities have a standard duration of about 10 seconds, but with these extension traits you can get that up to 14 to 15 seconds. Now with all that, plus proper cooldown reduction for your Bridge Officer abilities like an Ox to Bat build, or the Boimler Effect or Improved Photonic Officer, you can get it so that your Firing Mode will remain active for nearly 100% of the time. This has been part of the energy weapon meta for ages now. Any firing mode that doesn't have an extension trait is basically useless on the high end. 
For those of you who might remember the uh, when the legendary Jem'Hadar attack ship was announced, remember when Vanguard Specialist was first revealed and it didn't have the extension for the specialization firing modes? There's a reason that we made such a fuss about that and Cryptic actually listened to us and we got that added to that starship trait. And now abilities like Surgical Strikes and Reroute Reserves to Weapons are actually viable to use on the high end. Hopefully exceed rated limits will get a revamp like the other two did, but you know, one firing mode at a time. Now, Fire at Will actually does have an extension trait. In fact, technically it has two, but neither of them work like the others, and there are some issues that really do need to be addressed. The first Starship trait is called Redirecting Arrays, and this came off of the Tucker Miracle Worker Cruiser, as well as the uh, KDF and Romulan versions that I cannot remember the name of at the moment. With this trait, while Fire at Will is active, anytime you take damage, you will extend the duration of Fire at Will by, what is it? 0.33 seconds, maxing out at a total of a 15 second duration. So the problem with this firing mode is that one, it requires you to get shot at. So you're already going to have to redirect some of your build to survival for, because again, it requires you to get shot at. So you're basically limiting yourself to at most a uh, DPS tank hybrid, if not a full tank build. Now, because this trait requires you to get shot at, that means you're going to have to generate a certain amount of threat when you're in a TFO in order to actually get shot at. So enemies will pay attention to you and shoot at you to actually extend the duration of your firing mode. Now, if someone else is outperforming you in threat, so if they're doing more threat, they're going to shoot at them instead. And therefore, your performance is going to suffer because you're going to lose uh, duration on your fire will. So with this firing mode, that means you have to further build into threat generation, which is further going to detract from your DPS output, assuming you're wanting to go for a fire at will DPS, which is kind of the whole point of this video. The other big problem with this trait is that it only extends for a maximum of 15 seconds. And remember earlier, I said fire at will's uh, minimal cooldown was extended to 20 seconds. So there are going to be five whole seconds where you're not going to have fire at will active anyway. That alone makes this useless for any sort of fire at will DPS build, but at the same time, this is also going to hurt the performance for any tank builds wanting to use this ability, because, you know, without fire will up, you're going to be generating less threat. However, unlike most firing mode abilities, fire at will has some options in terms of extension traits, the other being entwined tactical matrices, which comes off of the Gagarin Miracle Worker Battlecruiser, also the, uh, the Kuj Battlecruiser, I think that's how you pronounce it. Now, calling Entwined Tactical Matrices an extension trait is a bit of a misnomer because an extension trait typically extends the duration of a fiery mode ability by a certain duration, usually four to five seconds. And that is not how Entwined Tactical Matrices works. How this trait functions is that anytime you activate any level of torpedo spread, you will get a free hit of Fire at Will and Scatter Volley 1. And in turn, anytime you activate any level of Fire at Will or Scatter Volley, you'll get a free hit of Torpedo Spread 1. So instead of extending the duration of Fire at Will, this one basically allows you to flip-flop between Fire at Will 3, or whichever one you're using, and Fire at Will 1. So you activate Fire at Will 3 on your Bridge Officer abilities, let it do its thing, and then just before it's about to expire, you hit your Torpedo Spread, and then once that fires, uh, that will give you your Energy Weapons Fire at Will 1, which that'll continue firing off while your Fire at Will 3 is cooling down. Now, there are a few issues here. For one, this one requires much more awareness than your average firing mode extension trait because a lot of players just like to you know spam bar everything myself included but with uh, entwined tactical matrices you got to be a bit more careful because you have to make sure to fire off that torpedo spread at a certain moment that moment being when your fire at will 3 is about to expire because that fire at will 1 will trigger as soon as you fire off your torpedo spread and it will override fire at will 3 if that hasn't finished its cycle yet Meaning not only did you override your Fire at Will 3 for a weaker version of the same ability, but then once the Fire at Will 1 uh, finishes, Fire at Will 3 is still going to be on cooldown, so there's going to be a good few seconds where you just don't have a firing mode up at all. Another big issue is that Fire at Will 1 will do less damage than Fire at Will 3, so for literally half the time you're in combat, you're going to be doing less damage with your Fire at Will. Now, an example, this is a combat log from an ISE that I did during uh, one of Casual SAB streams from the other day. Now, if we go into the player analysis, bring that over here, go to me. Now, look here between the difference between Fire Will 3 and Fire Will 1. I did 113k DPS with Fire Will 3 and only 54 with Fire Will 1. 
Now, like I said earlier, Fire Will does debuff your damage a little bit. Fire Will 3 reduces your damage to uh, 90%. The, the trade-off is that you're hitting more targets at once and you're getting that extra hit during each firing cycle. So that's kind of the trade-off there. So you're being reduced down to 90% of your normal output with 3, but with uh, Fire Will 1, it's being reduced to 80%. And Fire Will 2, it's, Fire Will 2, it's 85%. But, I mean, we're seeing a 50% reduction here between Fire at Will 3 and Fire at Will 1 in this ISE. Granted, this is going to be a little bit skewed more toward Fire at Will 3 because I was also using the Excelsior 2's console, but that is still quite a difference. Now, this is from another run from a few days before that, um, one of Periscope Gaming's live, st live streams, and as you can see, we're seeing a similar split again nearly 50 percent difference between uh between firewall 3 and firewall 1. in fact in this run uh firewall 1 was actually beat out by my total pet damage as well but again we're being skewed a little bit more toward firewall 3 because i am still using the excelsior 2 console here now this one is from a ninth rule patrol that i did and those splits a little closer together now but still a quite a bit of a difference between firewall 3 and firewall 1. Again, still using the Excelsior 2 console here, but you're seeing a noticeable drop off in DPS whenever Fire Will is up compared to Fire Will 3, which makes sense because Fire Will 1 isn't as powerful as Fire Will 3. Now, I know some of you are ready to call me an elitist douche for complaining about 372k DPS, but at the same time, this is with Fire Will, like, I, that number would have been even higher with Beam Overload or way higher with Scatter Volley. So, and the fact is, None of the other firing modes have to put up with this crap. They don't have to put up with this weird flip-flop stuff. And I'm, I, you know, Firewheel is l losing a noticeable amount of DPS because of this whole flip-flop uh, scheme that you have to do with ETM. None of the others have to put up with that. So why does Fire at Will? And granted, this this firing mode does a something unique, something that most of the others don't do. It, it is able to fire on multiple enemies at the same time. But again. So does Scatter Volley. That's able to hit up to three uh, different targets within that 90 degree cone. You know, and while uh, while ETM does affect Scatter Volley in the same way that it does Fire at Will, Scatter Volley also has Withering Barrage, which is a proper extension trait. So why why can't Fire at Will have that? Another issue with Entwine Tactical Matrices is that it kind of limits your options in terms of what sort of torpedoes that you can use, because with ETM, you need a torpedo for that uh, for that trait to function, because it doesn't uh, it doesn't trigger when you activate uh, torpedo spread. It triggers when you actually fire off the torpedo spread. I'm pretty sure it's that. It's either that or you can't activate the fire at will until after the torpedo spread is fired. But either way, there's some coordination that is required that makes this kind of a pain in the butt. But the thing with the torpedo is that because, you know, uh, Entwine Tactical Matrices has an uptime of 10 seconds, that means you can't use a torpedo that has a recharge time that is longer than 10 seconds, because otherwise you're going to screw up your timing. So that means no Tricopult torpedoes, no Energy Weapon torpedoes, and no Maelstrom torpedoes. None of them are going to be viable on a Fire at Will build using Entwine Tactical Matrices to extend the duration of Fire at Will. Now, let's look at some examples of Fire at Will builds, particularly damage-focused Fire at Will builds, because there are kind of two different directions that you can go with for a Fire at Will build, and each one does have its own specific problems that really do need to be addressed in order to make them comparable to the others. Okay, there are two approaches that you can take to a Fire at Will build. There's this, which is a more forward-facing Fire at Will build, which is going to function quite a bit a lot like a uh, sc uh, Cannon Scatter Volley build would uh, would function. Uh, we've got mostly dual beam banks in the front, and then we've got a bunch of Omni Beams in the back. Now, the big problem with uh, Fire at Will builds that are forward-facing is the aft weapons, partic particularly on a ship uh, like this that is a 4-3 weapons layout. You see, because there are restrictions on omnidirectional beams and, well, you can only get two it, uh, on any ship. Uh, this, this this third one, this is not an omnidirectional beam. This is the board cutting beam. This means that the board cutting beam the board cutting beam is unique because it's not uh, it's not a typical energy weapon. It's not it's not affected by any firing modes. So this is not going to have this is not going to be affected by fire at will whatsoever. It's just going to fire at one single target and do its own thing. 
The other option would be to put a turret in here instead, because that's the only other weapon that's going to be omnidirectional, that being, you know, having a 360 degree firing arc, but that's really only going, going to work best on a miracle worker ship, as long as you're using mixed armament synergy, which, uh, this is the world razor, it's a, it doesn't have miracle worker seating, so I don't have mixed armament synergy, so there is no point in me putting a turret on here. Now, I would love to be able to get three Omni Beams in here, but yeah, the game just won't let me. And it's kind of stupid because, I mean, if you look at a cannon build... Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's switch over to a cannon build. See, cannon builds don't have this problem because there are zero restrictions on turrets. So uh, this this is still a 5-3 build. It's a cannon scatter volley build, and I am able to put three turrets here in the back. And if you want to see just how unrestricted turrets actually are, go check out one of the several turret builds that I've done on this channel. Like this one. Now let's look at a different kind of fire wheel build. One I like to call a broadside build. God, they still haven't fixed this bug. There we go. Can you tell this is my favorite ship? <laughs> Anyway, so a fire wheel build on a 4-4 build is a little more difficult because, you know, you're going to have less forward weapon slots. I mean, this is the common plague of 4-4 weapon builds in general, is that they don't have as many forward weapon slots. So they don't have enough room for, you know, dual cannons, assuming they can even equip dual cannons because many Federation cruisers can't. But the same is kind of true with dual beam banks. You're not going to have as much room in the front, so they're going to do less damage overall because you don't have as many. And again, the uh, uh, problem with the Omni Beams is only going to be even worse on a 4-4 build because, again, you can only have two and, you know, with four weapon slots in the back, then you're really screwed. So what I like to do instead is go with beam arrays. Beam arrays have a much wider firing arc than most other uh, energy weapons, having a firing arc of 250 degrees. With a firing arc this wide, this means that there is going to be some overlap on your sides between your forward and your aft weapons. Meaning the goal with this sort of build is to focus most of your damage to either side of your ship rather than to the front of your ship, like with most builds. Now, this is my preferred playstyle, this sort of build, where you're, you know, broadsiding with big, large cruisers. I love this sort of stuff, and it, it really pains me that it's also probably, like, the least powerful DPS build that you can make. Like, look at this thing. I've got seven isomags, and I've got three of the colony consoles, plus the DPRM, the Domino, and the Excelsior 2 console. Like, this thing should be beefy as all craziness, but all those, uh, those combat logs that I showed you earlier, those were all done on this build. And that 441k uh, run that I did with Spencer, that's probably the highest I've ever gotten with this build outside of like a heavy supported run. Whereas with using Cannon Scatter Volley, I've been able to get up to like 700k at least in ISE. And again, that's not in like heavy supported runs, that's just in, you know, whoever's around and wants to do an ISE. And the Theseus really isn't all that different from the Lexington. I mean, yeah, there are some big differences like the uh, the, the weapons layout and the fact that one's a destroyer and this one's a uh, dreadnought. But I mean, they're both miracle worker ships and they're both pretty engineering heavy. But actually, I mean, the uh, the Theseus being a destroyer, it's actually going to have less uh, engineering uh, consoles, which means less room for isomagnetic consoles. So, yeah. I'm running with less isomags on the Theseus, but vastly outperforming this build in DPS. Like, vastly. We're talking like 300k DPS. That's a lot. One of the other big issues with a broadside build like this is that while it's pretty easy to get your beams to be focused more on the side of your ship than the forward end of your ship, it's kind of hard to find certain consoles and abilities and even other weapons that'll synergize with that. Torpedoes are a big thing in that area because there are only so many wide-angle torpedoes in the game. I think the current total is six if you include the missile launchers, which I normally don't, but last time I didn't, people yelled at me. So yeah, so about, it's about six, though really it's actually five now because one of those wide angle torpedoes was only available on the Voth Bulwark Cruiser, which was a tier five ship that was put into the Phoenix Prize Store, but then they took out all the tier five ships from the Pre Phoenix Prize Store, so now it is impossible to get that, uh, that wide angle, I think it's a Chronoton torpedo, without, unless you already own that ship, and there's no way to get it anywhere else. So that basically limits your options to the wide angle quantum torpedo, the prolonged photon torpedo, uh, the spatial torpedo from the Lobi store, which is part of that Enterprise era set, uh, the Lucari missile launcher, and uh, was, uh, I think there's a Ferengi missile launcher, I think that's the last one. Yeah, those are the only six projectile weapons with a 180 degree firing arc like this. 
It's not just torpedoes, there are a number of consoles and bridge officer abilities that also only have forward 90 degree arcs, which make them very difficult to use on broadside builds such as this. I mean, that's the whole reason why I don't have the Immolating Phaser Lance on this build, because I would love to have it on this build, but <laughs> it makes it really difficult to, you know, dip in and out of its limited firing arc with uh, how the rest of the ship is laid out. Even Gravity Well here is kind of pushing the limits of, you know, how far I'll go for a forward-facing ability, because this has a firing arc of 135 degrees. It's not great, but it's still better than 90, I guess. Like I said, this is my favorite sort of playstyle, with, you know, a big hulking dreadnought firing beams in every direction, but again, most of your damage is going to be focused to your side, and there are limitations there that do make, you know, setting up this type of build kind of a pain in the butt. Now, I brought up broadside builds not just because they are my favorite playstyle, but because improving these builds would go a long way to improving the general opinion of ships with 4-4 weapons layouts. Forward-facing weapon builds have always been more popular because, you know, they do more damage, so anytime a ship comes out with a 4-4 uh, a weapons layout, it's always met with massive amounts of groaning because it'll never perform as well as a ship with a 5-3 weapons layout especially for energy weapons. For torpedo builds, it's a bit of a different story, but even then, torpedo builds are much more niche. The vast majority of the player base really only cares about energy weapons. Now, I don't want to spend this whole video complaining, so let's talk about some possible solutions for all of these problems. Now, for Fire at Will itself, I would think an obvious solution would be to restore its global cooldown back down to its original 15 seconds, and then to uh, create a starship trait that extends its duration by four to five seconds. But honestly, I don't think even that is going to help solve the issue of how, you know, abilities like Beam Overload and Cannon Scatter Volley are vastly outperforming this ability, so Fire Will itself also needs some sort of damage buff. I'm not saying it has to completely replace Scatter Volley, but it would be nice for it to get, you know, somewhat close, you know, more so than it is now. And the other big thing about this, if we're going to be introducing a new Starship trait, now this is, this is a big thing. Don't put it on a lockbox or promo ship. The idea here is to make this playstyle more viable to the majority of players, because I mean, beam weapons are especially are a very basic weapon that you gain access to very early into the game, and Fire at Will is definitely going to be uh, more valuable to certain players if it's properly buffed. But if you put that extension trait onto a promo or lockbox ship, that doesn't help anyone, because not only have you put this trait on an extremely expensive ship that most players aren't going to have access to, but you've also put it onto a single character unlock ship, which means, you know, if you want to put this on any other characters, you're going to have to buy the very expensive ship all over again. This is why no one runs rapid fire on any builds, because you put go for the kill on a promo ship. I mean, it became a little more viable after you put it on uh, the legendary Jem'Hadar attack ship, but I mean, you see my point. This is exactly why I've stopped caring about Beam Overload, because I'm tired of having to buy the Zindi Adaleth Dreadnought in order to set up Beam Overload on another character, because that ship is still a single character unlock because it's a low buy store ship. You know, why do that when I could just set a new character up with a Scatter Volley build because I've already got Withering Barrage unlocked on like from like four different ships because that's available on several ships. Seriously, three of them are from the Sea Store, three of them are the legendary versions of those Sea Store ships, and one of them was the free ship from the Klingon recruitment event. Now, if Cryptic doesn't want to reduce the uh, global cooldown of Fire Will, the only other option would be to modify Entwined Tactical Matrices so that it, you know, either gives you Fire Will or Scatter Volley 3 every time you use Torpedo Spread, or if, as long as it, like, copies uh, the one you're using somehow. I don't really know how it will work, but the whole flip-flopping between Fire Will 3 and 1 is a killer, and it's gotta go. However, Cryptic usually isn't in the habit of modifying Starship traits like that. It's usually easier and more profitable to just make a whole new Starship trait, which is why, you know, the actual extension trait with reducing the global cooldown, I feel like, is a more viable option. So yeah, that plus a moderate damage buff, I feel like would go a long way to helping out uh, Fire at Will in general. But uh, let's talk about some of the other stuff for, you know, the more specific build types. 
For forward facing fire at will builds, the big drawback is that you can only get two Omni Beams on the back. This is going to be a problem if you are running, you know, something on a 5-3 weapons layout, because you're not going to be able to get a third Omni Beam there. So the options would be to either loosen up on the restrictions for omnidirectional beams. I know this is something that has been talked about a lot, and I don't really understand why Cryptic has been so resistant to it, because Omni Beams really aren't powerful, like, at all. I don't know why they're restricted so heavily the way they are, especially when turrets have zero restrictions whatsoever, and they function literally the same purpose. In fact, I'm pretty sure if I put a fire will build with all Omni Beams and uh, a turret build with a, a scatter volley, which I've done many times, I'm pretty sure the turret build would still outperform the Omni Beam build. So yeah, there's I don't understand why they're so heavily restricted the way they are. Yeah, it seems obvious at this point that Cryptic is unwilling to unrestrict Omni Beams like that, but what about just loosening the restrictions a bit so that you can get a third Omni Beam in the back? So either allow for a second crafted Omni Beam or even a second set Omni if you wanted to, or maybe um, introduce a new type of Omni Beam that fits a new third category. Now, for the Broadsiders, uh, one big problem that they have is that just Beam Arrays don't do as much damage as Dual Beam Banks. Even though you can have more beam arrays than you can dual beam banks, the dual beam banks always seem to outperform the beam arrays. So just a general buff for beam arrays would be kind of nice, but you know, I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. A big thing holding back broadside builds is the limited options for wide angle torpedoes. Not only are you stuck with a specific torpedo that may, might not do as much damage as another torpedo, but at the same time you're also giving up certain set bonuses. Like think about how many torpedoes that are a part of set bonuses. Like you're giving up on the dark matter torpedo, you're giving up on the ultimate torpedo if you're running a plasma build, you're, you're, you're giving up on a lot. Or the new maelstrom torpedoes, those don't have a wide angle version, in fact there's only the one version right now. Ideally, what I would really love to see uh, to solve this is to just let us be able to re-engineer the wide mod onto any torpedo. Because this is another thing that Cryptic seems to think is more powerful than it actually is, because it's really not, because you're giving up a whole modifier for the sake of increasing that uh, that firing arc. So you're giving up a damage or a crit D mod in favor of just increasing the arc, which you're, you're sacrificing damage for range, basically. So for overall DPS, that's technically going to hurt more than help, especially for like a forward facing build. But for a broadsider like I'm talking about, it's kind of the only option they have. The alternative would be to just make more wide angle torpedoes, because I mean, there are plenty of uh, torpedo variants that don't have wide angle versions, but at the same time, that doesn't solve the problem of how much you're giving up for the sake of having those wide angle torpedoes, because you're giving up a lot of existing set bonuses that are very valuable that all the other forward facing builds are going to have access to. Now, there's another piece of gear that would also really help uh, broadside builds, but again, these are really restricted right now, and these are the narrow angle beam arrays, which uh, what they are they're beam arrays, but they have a slightly narrower firing arc, uh, being lowered from 250 to 210 degrees. So a bit more narrow than your standard beam array, but still wide enough that they'll still overlap with any uh, standard beam arrays in the back. You can equip a total of two of these onto a ship, but the problem is that right now they are currently restricted only to the Constitution 3, which is a promo ship. This goes back to what I was saying before, putting something on a promo ship does not help the vast majority of players because it really sets it at a price point beyond their reach. So if you're wanting to help broadside builds, don't put stuff that would help them onto expensive single character unlock ships. So yet another thing that broadsiders could really benefit from is more versions of these narrow angle beam arrays. Ideally, I would love to be able to like craft versions of these because that way, you know, I could easily create them and be able to make them in any sort of damage type that I want, because right now the ones in the Constitution 3 are only a phaser version. So broadside builds that are running plasma or disruptor or anything else really don't have any other options there. But yeah, I would very much like to see more of these. And frankly, I would love to see more of these in like some of the existing variants. Like uh, for anti-proton, I don't want just standard anti-proton uh, narrow angle beams. I would want Baul narrow angle anti-proton beams to put on my Baul build because you guys, I don't know if you guys remember this, but I really like Baul beams. And Baul beams go great with fire will because then you just get refractions going all over the place. It's great. Yeah, the narrow angle beams, they were a nice touch, but at the same time, we need way more of them that are much easier to get because just putting those on the Constitution 3, I mean, they're way out of reach for most players. So that really doesn't help 
much of anyone. So yeah, those are a number of the issues that Fire at Will is facing, and some ideas for solutions that I think could work. What about you guys? Do you like Fire at Will as much as I do and want to see it buffed as well? And if so, do you have any other ideas that would buff this playstyle? If you do, feel free to leave that down in the comments down below, and if you don't, you know, feel free to say hi anyway, en engagement is always appreciated. But yeah, uh, either way, while you're down there, be sure to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button to become a member, or hit the super thanks button, or find the link to the merch store in the video's description. If you're ever shopping on the Epic Games Store, be sure to use my content creator code STU1701 when you're checking out. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help me out. It does help me out, and I do appreciate it. Uh, that is code STU1701. Either way, thank you so much for watching. My name is Stu, and I will see you guys next time.